What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and as you can probably tell by the title of this video we're not going to be looking over just one specific deck in the format we're going to be looking over the top 8 of the modern challenge uh, just look at some of the statistics and things like that from this event uh, normally I do kind of pick out like one single deck list usually from the modern challenge and just kind of do like a deck tech on that and kind of go from there and figure out modern content and stuff like that but we're actually going to be looking at the full top eight now that i think we have a basically the gist of the decks that we could possibly see in the modern format of course there are some decks that i have not gone over but realistically a lot of the top tier decks ones that i would put money on to possibly take down an event we've gone over so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the top eight standings from the modern challenge taken uh taken from this last saturday so here we are at the page for the Modern Challenge uh, that took place this past Saturday. But before we get too deep into it and we go over some of the some of the sweet deck lists and some of my findings and stuff when just looking through the top 32, I would greatly appreciate it if you haven't already, if you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and of course like the video. Three of those things uh, are just easy ways to support my channel. They're free and they take about two seconds to do. And of course, it makes me a very happy uh, camera box man and... You know, just keeps making me post videos and stuff like this definitely going to be trying some new stuff this week and over the next few weeks so if that's stuff that you want to see when i'm able to get it out uh of course support that stuff subscribe like those videos stuff like that leave comments on what you want to see if there's any specific deck lists go over certain cards and things like that and i believe spoiler season's coming up too so we're definitely going to be covering some stuff as we get into that um but without further ado let's go ahead and look at some of the uh the top eight deck list at the very least from the modern challenge so um all the decks i believe down here i mean i this is obviously how they were like seated um but i thought that's like what the deck lists were but surprisingly the first place finish for the modern challenge uh i honestly i saw uh auto thickton worm and i immediately thought uh the the neo brand the neo grizzle brand deck and I was wrong. I was way wrong. Because uh, we have Calibrated Blast actually winning the Modern Challenge this past weekend. Which uh, is, this is the deck that we're going to uh, kind of go over really quickly. Because there's not much to it, but it's pretty pretty sweet. So, Calibrated Blast is 3 mana. You reveal cards from the top of your library to you reveal a non-land card. You put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. And when the, you reveal a non-land card this way, it deals damage equal to that card's mana value to any target. So you play cards like uh, Auto Auto Thon Worm, Auto Th oh, yeah, um, 15 mana, uh, 914 nine Trample with Convoke, but obviously never casting it. 15 mana, uh, Emrakul 15 mana, Scion of Draco 12 mana, and Shadow Mortality 15 mana. Uh, and two throws of chaos, uh, basically just to cascade into Calibrated Blast, and then you can also uh, retrace it by discarding a land. Playing 38 lands, uh, throws makes this deck pretty consistent uh, in finding Calibrated Blast, and Blast can also be flashbacked as well, so you don't have to necessarily uh, keep retracing uh, throws of chaos. But uh, yeah, essentially this deck is just really trying to throw the worm, uh, emeracles, shadow mortalities, and scions at your opponent's face. Um, with some of like the utility lands like Autowara to bounce like ley lines and things like that, gemstone cavern to kind of get the jump on your opponent. Besaidu who shelters all to make your uh, calibrated blast and your throws uncounterable. Besaidu who endures to probably play the same role as like getting rid of uh, anything that give your opponent hexproof. Uh, Ramanop Ruins actually gives you a little bit of reach. Rafine's Tower lets you cycle. Um, Sokazin can make some tokens that can actually uh, kind of get in at your opponent as well. Um, if you just need to deal the last few points of damage with Calibrated Blast. Um, and then Sunscorched Desert is another desert that you can throw with uh, Ramanop Ruins. But then also can deal damage to a player or a Planeswalker. So that's like the real quick version of this deck. I mean it has like the sideboards and stuff. But like. Nefalia Drown Yard for like the more mid rangey like discardy decks. Uh, Autowara, Besaju Shelters, like just some of these like utility lands. And then Crime and Punishment for presumably decks that like kind of want to go wide. I mean, this kind of deals with the uh, Karn or the Construct tokens very effectively. Um, 
on top of all that but that's really just the one deck that we have not gone over and it, it's pretty sweet but it's like a really straightforward deck uh you're basically all in on this calibrated blast so uh, if that's something you're into definitely consider playing this deck i mean it is pretty sweet uh it is doing something interesting it's basically like the new belcher of like the format except like this is cheaper and usually can kill your opponent in one blast if your opponent's like not prepared for it like they fetch sock thought sees any one of these besides scion kills them um continue on second place i have some of these deck lists written down second place is like four color control like yorian uh except this one is playing a traverse the ovenwald package um just because it gets cards like dress down it gets to play in the main Mishra's Bauble just to uh, kind of up that count. You know, we have four, six, seven different uh, types that we can put in the graveyard. And like Traverse gets to play the role of the. Where is it? Because I know one of these decks actually played it. Uh, it gets to basically play it for Aladomri's Call, but it gets to pick up lands as well. Um, you can go search like your Besaju, uh, your Auto Auras, your Triomes to fix mana or cycle and like things like that um getting fetch lands for like your omnaths traverse does um what it wants to do for the deck just a little bit cheaper than uh the other card wants to do a domery's call even though call can be done it's the speed traverse for like one mana you're essentially being able to cast like the things you want to cast anyway on that turn so um really sweet you can also get your emerkel which is usually kind of like the mirror breaker um style card so yeah, pretty sweet. Um, I like this color for a version of four color for the fact that I just love Traverse the Open World. One of my favorite arts in Magic. One of my favorite cards to play. It's just really sweet. Uh, third place, we actually have a blue-white control list. Um, pretty stocked. There's nothing like super spicy in here. I mean, like three main deck Chalice of the Void. Just to like really not lose to like the uh, Living End and like Rhino's decks is uh, pretty solid. Um, aside from that, you know, nothing like super crazy going on here. Shout out to Archmage's Charm though, really great card. Fourth place, we have another four color Yorian deck. This one being more traditional, like what we're used to in like the Ephemerate package with these like Solitudes and Furies. Also just getting valued from like uh, protecting like your Risen Reefs and things like that. Um, playing two Othanissa, um, playing Abundant Growth. Um, Othanissa getting to find like your basically your whole deck minus like your four abundant growth and your uh, uh, instance of sorceries and that. Um, fifth place, we actually have a Murktide deck, which uh, one of the real realizations I made when looking through this deck. If you notice the creature slot, you have four Ledger Shredder, four Ragavan, three Murktide, but you're not actually playing uh, Dragon Rage Channeler anymore. And Dragon Rage Channeler used to be like a like a four of Ragavan, four Dragon Rage Chandler, um, three, four Merc Tide. And then Ledger Shredder came around and I think they were just maybe throwing in Ledger Shredder, like shaving some of the numbers, but now Dragon Rage Chandler is completely gone. Um, and it's kind of interesting because uh, the deck really got a lot of value, I think, from just getting to kind of like run through itself. But I guess Ledger Shredder doing a good enough job to where you're able to usually cast multiple spells each turn anyway, that maybe this is a little bit more effective than the Surveil. Um, but interesting to say the least, um, aside from that, I think pretty stock, uh, stock all together, uh, playing 19 lands. Love that. Uh, I played death shadow with like night, uh, 17 lands. So, uh, 19, still two more than I would generally play, but 19, definitely pretty good. Just shaving on down and all that. Um, sixth place, we have another like four color Yorian deck, uh, playing some amount of traverse the Ovenwalds. Um, not playing any Aldrami's Call, but definitely playing uh, sort of kind of something from like the first list, but kind of like hedging on like the Golden Wald, which I think is fine, but I think you just want to full commit to like the Traverse, honestly. Uh, seventh place, we got uh, Hammer. We actually went over a Hammer deck not too long ago. I believe it was actually last week. Um, kind of the stuff that we're known, known to see here from this deck, uh, notably playing Giver Runes and Core Outfitter. Um, with Core Outfitter attaching an equipment when it enters, and then Giver of Runes obviously giving protection from a color or colorless uh, to one of your things, which does a pretty good job protecting, you know, whatever you have a hammer on, or uh, even like protecting like a cauldron complete, uh, the living weapon token and stuff like that. So, uh, 
yeah, definitely a deck that I would have expected to see possibly more of in like top eight, just from the fact that this deck can just win out of nowhere. You know, if you're just not respecting it and it has the option of like playing fast against like some combo decks and against like the four color control deck to try to get underneath of them, but can also kind of play like this longer game of just getting to grind you out with like Urza Saga and things like that. So, um, would definitely be interested to see more of like uh, White Hammer, but um, either fortunately for some players or unfortunately for others, like it is only seventh place uh, in the weekend challenge. Finally, uh, I didn't think we would go a full top eight necessarily without like having a Cascade deck, but here we are. And we actually have a living end here and uh, just a small thing, honestly, because uh, if you have played living end or had uh, played against living end in the past, they only ever had three living ends. This deck is actually playing four of them. Um, aside from that, like the rest of the like cards and stuff stays the same uh, i believe that they played a oh i guess they didn't uh one of the other lists that made the top 32 that was a uh a living end deck was playing uh, archfina ifnir which puts minus one minus one counters whenever you discard or cycle on your opponent's creatures on all of them so um aside from that pretty pretty stock list you know just uh four outbursts the four shardless agent on the board and then getting to play the force of negation as a way to kind of go off on like your opponent's turn and force them to waste interaction uh before you inevitably set up like try to do it on their turn okay then i'm just going to do it on my turn uh shenanigans and stuff um yeah so that's the that's the top eight like kind of rounding out and like going in towards like the top 16 we have the four color um four color archon like uh, Dominal Creativity deck that we actually went over last week as well. Uh, Titan making into the top eight or into the top 16. Another really good deck that uh, definitely rewards you for some format knowledge plus, you know, just a broken deck all on its own. Uh, the Murktide deck that I was talking about that I was actually playing Dragon Rage Chandler, but it's only playing two of them and actually went down like a Murktide and an Archmage's Charm, it looks like, to fit the Dragon Rage Chandler. Um, I'm not sure exactly which list was correct. I personally like Dragon Rage Channeler just because it gives the deck the option to be a little bit more aggressive and kind of turn the corner. But at the same time, if Ledger Shutter is kind of doing the same thing and then eventually just grows to um, have as much power as Dragon Rage Channeler, like on the second or third turn, it's out. Um, with the, only the potential to get bigger, um, I think Ledger Shutter probably in long terms of a game is probably better, uh, even if it does cost one more mana. Um, 12th, we have another hammer deck. Uh, fourth, it looks like we have another Merc like we have a Murktide deck, but this one also playing two Dragon Rage Chandler and playing a main deck Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, this is someone that probably thinks that like Jace should be better in the format than what he actually is. Um, and I think like against like other Murktide decks, like just getting to unsummon it to their hand and make them invest the resources and then eventually just drowning them out with a uh, Jace Zero is probably pretty good. Um, and playing a one of it, it's fine, especially since you have like Ledger Shredders, some number of like Dragon Rage Channeler, and then like Merc Tide to kind of power it out, or I'm sorry, Ragavan to like power it out uh, earlier. Well, one of Jason Mind Sculptor is probably fine. Um, going further, 14th, we have another Hammer deck. This one playing the Reality Chip in it, so this is more like a blue white style um, deck, um, getting to play like Sea Chrome Coast and. Flooded strands and stuff. Mana base gets a little bit more painful when like playing the blue splash, especially when like the reality chip is your only really blue card. But uh, it, this also gives the deck so much uh, so much gas and so much potential that it's probably worth playing it, even if your mana base does kind of get considerably weaker. Uh, 15th, we have another creativity deck, and then 16th, we have a another Murktide deck. But this one, completely foregoing the Dragon Rage Chandler, is actually playing a Brazen Borrower in the main deck. Um, and that rounds out our top 16 of these decks. So a few of the revelations I made kind of scroll to the top. We'll stare at the finals where we actually see Calibrated Blast actually winning the format or winning the challenge, which is amazing. Um, a few things. One of the things I pointed out earlier, Dragon Rage Chandler is falling out of favor. Um, it just looks like a lot of like the Murktide decks are kind of hedging their bets. Playing more Ledger Shredder, which was kind of expected after the card kind of just blew up onto the scene. Um, I assume that Dragon Rage Chandler would still probably be played and it would just maybe be just a tad 
creature heavy and maybe even cut down on Merc Tides just for the fact that the deck could then play just a faster tempo game plan. But clearly I'm wrong. Like three Merc Tides all you need and then just four Monkey and four uh, Ledger Shredder and you're good to go. Um, second, Hammer is still very good. I mean, we, we probably saw at least like 15 to 20%, maybe even 25%. I think it might have been four deck lists. Um, in the top 16 that were playing Hammer, you know, um, most of them playing the mono white hammer version some of them playing like the reality chip either one i think is possibly fine uh one of them just has a more streamlined mana base the other one a, a slightly more complicated complicated mana base in the fact that like your fetch lands most of the time are probably gonna have to find like a blue source just in case you're able to go and search out your reality chip but the um potential ceiling and crazy stuff that you can do um with the blue white version is like the same as the white version because they play all the same cards just i think your longevity gets a little bit better when you're able to reconfigure a reality chip onto like a say an ornithopter or your like a memnight or something like that you know so hammer is still a deck to definitely watch out for hammer and murktide um just kind of hanging around the top there um four color control always the thing i still think it's probably the best deck in the format um even though it like doesn't necessarily you know win really a lot of the challenges even um it just comes out and, like so many people are playing it and it just has so many good tools that it's it's just a good deck that in general kind of like beats the field and sometimes you lose to crazy things like uh calibrated blast but you just kind of have a good matchup against the rest of the field uh speaking of the four color control deck i think at this point yorian or omnath has got to go um even though decks like this aren't necessarily winning challenges or like winning rcqs and things like that the fact that these decks exist and they you know put so many decks in like the top eight and they do eventually end up winning big tournaments you know and they have such good i think like win percentages honestly like the worst thing about the deck is like just playing fast enough like the worst enemy of the four color yorian decks is the pilot and it honestly says a lot when like even players like spike say like oh we'll just play faster and like it'll be fine then actually plays the deck in a paper tournament and you know they they retract that statement you know so definitely um if not for like a power level standpoint which i think the deck is very powerful and possibly just like not too good for the modern format but just makes the format unfun and for just making the format uh to me more fun uh you have to get rid of yorian or omnath i was on the yorian train a long time ago i think giving omnath a chance in the format is fine um but i think yorian since you've banned all the other good companions and essentially punished all the other players from playing the good companions you might as well punish the yorian players uh because they want rounds to be extended like another 30 minutes and they're just terrible people don't play the yorian deck unless you want to win then absolutely play that deck that deck is awesome um, from a power level standpoint and you know, like I said, I think it's the best deck So that's the deck that I would uh, suggest somebody play uh, If they were trying to just grind out games and, and win So that might have been uh, pretty long-winded definitely longer than some of my uh, Other deck techs and things like that But I definitely wanted to hammer home some points of the modern format and really get into an actual like tournament and stuff um, Not any of the RCQs necessarily but like these are some of the decks that people are going to look towards to like try to build in paper and take to these RCQs and stuff. So I think it's important to start here. Um, and what a good way then, you know, us talking about basically every other deck, of course, besides the one that actually wins. So I'm going to leave you all with that. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, of course, leave a like on the video. Comment down below if you want to see more videos like this or if you just want me to stick to more like single decks and maybe like look at some of the updates and things like that, which of course we can always do. And of course, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell as it supports me a lot more than you think it would and it takes two seconds to do. And of course, I greatly appreciate all the support that I get and it keeps making me uh, make videos. It's awesome. I have a really good time doing it so that's gonna do it for me in this video i hope you all enjoyed and i hope to see you all in the next video see you